the key to dispelling all the misconceptions about foie gras has been for people to come and visit Hudson Valley and see how we operate, see how the ducks are cared for, see how the workers uh, operate on our farm, how each one of the stages of the duck's life is, is given the appropriate attention so that there's no stress and no, no abuse to any of the ducks at any stage of their life here on this farm, and including all the way up through the hand feeding and up until the time that we take the duck. Put them in. And you got their necks sticking out. You feed them, just walk along, but it's all in, all out. So here's a duck. This guy hasn't finished his last meal, right? It doesn't matter because the feeder goes through and feeds them all. So this guy's digesting it, this guy's digesting it, but this guy in here is puking it. Then you get a video of PETA, and, and rightfully so, they come in and they take a picture of a duck that's had too much to eat, it's puking out its food. And it's liquid, it's like grits. So they go like this, they shake their head, the food's flying everywhere, and it looks like something's just something's wrong with that whole idea. It's a small farm, but yet we're big enough to supply the country with foie gras. It's not a uh, factory mindset. The fact that we individually care for each bird and don't have that all in, all out, or caged agriculture. It's their floor birds and then they're held in corrals where we hand feed them. So we are a fairly large farm, but small in our thinking and our operations. And it's something that gives us a very signature quality. It's a a long tail of how we arrive at that quality of product. The type of bird we use is still an old, somewhat of a heritage breed of the Moulard duck. And the process is slower. Our gavage, you know, our hand feeding, is one that's dragged out for a longer period of time so it's less invasive with the duck. And therein lies all the controversy is the hand feeding is something that looks to the, to the, to the untrained eye to be uh, gruesome. When you put a tube in the throat of a duck, you think, oh my God, it would, it would hurt you or me. But a duck is built differently than we are. They have a, the ability, and they breathe through their tongue. And they also have a throat for the food that goes into their crop that's strictly for food. They don't have a voice box in there. They don't have any larynx or pharynx like we do, any vocal cords. It's just a tube that they use to eat with. So they can close their tongue, dive underwater, swallow a whole fish, spines and all, and grind it up with their gizzard something we also don't have is a gizzard and a crop. So they are built completely differently than we are. So the use of a tube to feed the ducks is not something that bothers them as much as it may bother an outside person viewing um, foie gras. So it's something we'd like to show you firsthand, let you draw your own conclusions as to how the ducks behave when they're in the feeding program. When they're running around the barns, they'll stay away from you because they're afraid of predators and they get used to you more and more as they stay on our farm. And when you go into the hand feeding, they actually become accustomed to the feeder. And that same feeder visits them three times a day to feed them. And they become acclimated to that person especially, but to people in general.